We've covered several brands that are truly Filipino, but none of them could get any more Filipino than Mang Tomas. I'm sure you've seen those BuzzFeed articles about 30 signs that you grew up Filipino or 20 things only Filipinos will understand. And having a bottle of the wildly popular Mang Tomas Sarsa at home is a necessary addition to those lists. I'm not sure if it's about the brand name or the packaging, or if it's about how the Mang Tomas sauce elevates the food we Filipinos love. But what we can agree on is that it's truly a Pinoy thing. So it made me think about how Mang Tomas got started and how it became so big. Because nowadays, Mang Tomas products are in every grocery store, and you see them a lot on TV, which is a testament to how much money they have since TV commercials are very expensive. So what's their origin story, and how did they get to where they are today? We go back to the 1950s, when it all started. The founder's name is Tomas de los Reyes, also known as Mang Tomas. Mang Tomas was a meat vendor, and in the early days, he had a tiny little stall right outside his house in Quezon City, where he sold pork meat. This wasn't cooked pork meat, just your typical pork meat stall at the wet market. Mang Tomas store was a small setup, but it had an advantage since it was strategically located right across the Loloma Cockpit Arena in Quezon City. The cockpit was a landmark destination for many, attracting hordes of people on a regular basis. Since there were regular events being held in the arena, the strategic location of Mount Tomas store drew a lot of customers, especially at the end of the day, since the owners of the winning cocks would head on out and drop by Mount Tomas little shop. They would regularly drop by to buy slabs of pork that they will then take home and roast. The roasted pork meat will then be their pollutant that night during their victory drinking sessions. So Mount Tomas, being the quick wit entrepreneur that he is, he saw this as an opportunity. And so he figured, I'm selling raw pork meat, and these guys still need to roast it at home. What if I do the roasting for them? And so that's what he did. He took action and changed things up a bit. He started selling roasted pork. And sure enough, as he filled the need of the customers, more people loved the convenience of it all. But not only that, they specifically loved the taste of Mount Tomas roasted pork. I'm just gonna start calling it lechon at this point instead of roasted pork just so you know how fitting it was for his customers to buy it every time they score a win. Because I mean, lechon is a necessity for celebratory events. And so, Mount Tomas lechon started to get some momentum. And as the customers flocked to Mount Tomas store, so did the money. Reinvesting his earnings to improve his shop, this slowly turned his tiny little stall into the first lechon shop in La Loma, Quezon City in 1954. It's important to point out that at this point, Mang Tomas thought he was only roasting pork. Little did he know that he was heading the charge of the rise of the lechon industry. Today, La Loma is actually known as the lechon capital of the Philippines with several well-known lechon restaurants in the area. Mang Tomas shop started becoming very popular. Before, the cockpit patrons made up the bulk of the customers who bought lechon from Mang Tomas. And those guys used to go to La Loma primarily for cockfighting. But eventually, getting lechon from Mang Tomas became the primary reason to go there. Gradually, word spread about the irresistible taste of lechon. It didn't only attract more people. Mayors, congressmen, senators, they started buying from Mang Tomas. And it didn't stop there. President Ramon Magsaysay himself, the president of the Philippines at that time, went to La Loma to feast on Mang Tomas Lechon. This is getting me pretty hyped up about the taste of Mang Tomas Lechon because to have a president eat at your restaurant, reportedly with his bare hands, is a big deal. And to top it off, the president loved it so much that they started serving Mang Tomas Lechon in several events held at the Malacanang Palace. Imagine that. From a food stall, to serving visiting kings and queens, foreign leaders and celebrities at the house of the president of the country. And if it isn't obvious enough, business was booming. Demand skyrocketed from all the publicity that Mang Tomas was getting from every celebrity guest that was enjoying his lechon. It came to a point when Mang Tomas had to open his own piggery so that he could raise the hogs and have more control as to the quality of pork that he was serving. Years later, as is often the case in business, other entrepreneurs saw the success of Mang Tomas Lechon Shop. Seeing that he was earning good money from the sales of roasted pork, they started their own. 
And so naturally, competitors emerged. It's both annoying and amusing, really. Like sometimes here in the province, you would come across an isolated restaurant that's located far away from the city. And as that restaurant gains some momentum and starts attracting people, I'd notice some similar restaurants popping up right beside it. I guess there's always that, if he can do it, I can do it type of mentality for some people. And that's kind of what happened here. So now, Mang Tomas, seeing competitors starting to carve into his customer base, he started thinking of another way to make his product stand out. That's when he began working on the special sauce, the sarsa. Sarsa is a liver sauce used as roasted pork dressing. Let's just say that without sarsa, your lechon eating experience feels incomplete. Nowadays, normally, those who sell lechon give you a packet of sarsa that they themselves prepared in-house. But at that time, this wasn't the norm yet. Sarsa didn't come along with your lechon. Mang Tomas started focusing on developing sauce recipes that complement the taste of his lechon, mixing newer spices that he hopes would produce an irresistible taste, completing the lechon experience and taking it to a whole new level. This is when he came up with the Mang Tomas Sarsa, the soulmate of lechon. The sauce that, if it's not there when you're eating lechon, it still tastes good, but it feels like there's something missing. Rightfully so, Tomas de los Reyes is credited as the inventor of the sarsa. This sarsa recipe is the one that we are all familiar with, the one that we know and love today. There are other sarsa products out there and they all come close, but if it's not Mang Tomas sarsa, it just doesn't feel right. Predictably, Mang Tomas Lechon and the Sarsa was a winning combination, and it didn't just trigger unanticipated popularity, it also triggered the cravings of a nation. Sadly, Mang Tomas would pass away in 1985, and years later, his relatives sold the rights of Mang Tomas Sarsa to the owner of the Aristocrats restaurant. The rights would later on be acquired again by the Southeast Asia Food Inc. in 1991. This company is now known as NutriAsia Inc. NutriAsia is the largest producer of sauces and condiments in the Philippines. So yes, they're quite big. They're the company that owns Dato Puti Vinegar, Silver Swan Soy Sauce, Golden Fiesta Cooking Oil, UFC Banana Ketchup, among other leading brands. It's unclear as to why the relatives of Mang Tomas sold the rights of his sarsa, but without them doing so, Mang Tomas sarsa may not have grown at this pace and may not have reached millions of Filipinos. Presently, Mang Tomas Lechon store is still running and is still doing really well. It's being run by Mang Tomas' daughter-in-law, Cora de los Reyes, who is quite proud because of the fact that her father-in-law is a reason why La Loma has become a thriving food destination. Although the store remains as a landmark restaurant, its popularity doesn't come close to that of Mang Tomas Sarsa. The Mang Tomas Sarsa is currently positioned as an all-around sauce and not just for lechon. The Sarsa is now being exported around the world and honestly, it's something to be proud of. It's nice to have a product that reaches global markets to show foreign regions the taste that Filipinos love because it kind of gives them a glimpse into our culture. But if I'm being completely honest, I'm just really happy that the experience of eating lechon is so much better just because Mang Tomas Sarsa exists. And it's all thanks to the ingenuity and hard work of Tomas de los Reyes.